wonderfully made She's heaven's angel So strong Even in struggle, yeah When life comes like a storm From every angle She rises above it all The backbone of every home Nothing compares to all she do The true meaning of every family She's the glue Welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, 
am the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and I am thoroughly excited about being able to share with you again. You know, I really, really look forward to our time together. Uh, I take it very, very seriously. I'm certain that if you've been with me for a while, you can see that I do. I hope that everyone is having an amazing uh, day, and my prayers that something we'll talk about today will shift your life. I was uh, pondering what what should I what should I talk about? What should we discuss today? And I know I know it was Holy Spirit who um, put it in my in my heart, in my spirit, on my mind uh, to discuss how a woman builds her confidence because I think that that is a subject that um, I think many women shy away from the subject of your confidence because broken consciousness, a lack of really understanding who you are, what your real value and, and worth is, puts you in a position where you're constantly trying to impress people that you are something because you've not um, come to terms with who you are, your value and your worth within yourself. So you always show up like, you know, I'm the confident woman. I'm every woman. It's all in me and all of this kind of thing when the reality is Behind that facade, behind that facade, you are struggling to believe in yourself. And so I want to kind of deal with this almost head on today because I think it's going to help a lot of women, older, younger, doesn't matter what your age or your stage. I think this conversation can help you because the thing that um, the world uses against the woman constantly is insecurity. When you lack confidence in yourself and you don't really believe in you, the world will sniff you out like a shark sniffs out blood in the ocean and the world will pounce and the world will take advantage of you. Now, if you look in uh, Proverbs 31, 25, if I'm looking down this way, it's because my notes are here. It reads like this. She is clothed, and this is the NIV version, the New International Version. It says she is clothed with strength and dignity, talking about the virtuous woman that excels them all. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Powerful, powerful, powerful verse. Now, this verse refers to the, the virtuous woman, of course, described clearly in Proverbs 31. And it portrays her as someone who is strong, dignified, and unafraid of the future. Her confidence stems from her trust in God and her character. So now how do we get a generation of women from a place of timidity, insecurity, low self-esteem, to a place of authentic confidence. I love what uh, Christina Grimmy says. This is important, especially for women to hear. She said, confidence is not 
quote, they will like me. Confidence is, quote, I'll be fine if they don't. And why did I why did I think that was such a powerful quote? It's because most women live with this idea of it's a group thinking kind of mindset. It's a I got to be a part of, you know, the clique. I got to be a part. if they don't accept me, I'm that's one of the ways that women devalue themselves. If 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 the if the group doesn't accept me, if they don't like me, um I can't see my own value. True confidence is knowing that if they don't accept me, I'll still be fine. Oh, wow. Now, let me start off with this. Wherever there is a lack of confidence, there's a deficiency in certain areas, and I'll name just a few. In other words, if you're if you're sitting and you're you're with me today and you're watching this, you're either live with us in real time or you're watching the replay of this. If there is a deficiency, if there's a lack of confidence in you, there's a deficiency in certain areas. I'll name a few and let's see if we can locate you. Letter A. When a woman or a person for that matter lacks confidence, there is quite often a deficiency in their original programming. And the Bible says what? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. So there's an original programming within all of us, right? And it's largely based in how we were parented. You know, it's based in how we were educated. It's based in the community or the tribe um, we come from or the village we come from. These things established our, what, original programming. Now, sometimes that original programming was not so good. Other times it was absolutely great. But we all show up into the world with some original programming. Now, None of us could have avoided our history for the most part, but we all are in complete control of our destiny, at least most of us. You know, unless you're in some precarious position, legal position, health condition, or something like that. But 99% of the time, our destiny is completely in our hands. But if you're sitting and you lack confidence today, it may stem back to the way you were raised. You might have been raised by people who demeaned you or did not uh, esteem you or pour into you. Or, or maybe they were people of low self-esteem and, you know, they only gave you what they had. And so your original programming was faulty. Your default was faulty or your default is faulty. Uh, there, there, wherever there's a lack of confidence, there's a deficiency in letter A. Your programming, you know, my father and mother raised me to believe in myself. All I heard all of my life was, you can do it. You can be the greatest at this. You can be the greatest at that. You know what I'm saying? My struggle with confidence was not, um, had nothing to do with my original programming. It had everything to do with traumatic experiences, you know, primarily being a teenage father at 15, you know, and experiencing social ridicule. It kind of impaired my confidence for quite a while. And I had to, I had to work my way through that and I had to work my way out of that into a place where I could really embrace the world and show up with my full strength. But a lot of folk did not have that kind of parenting. Okay, letter B. 
uh, let's see, letter B. Um, maybe a deficiency in letter B, your skill set. You know, you may lack confidence because you've not, either you've not put in the time to sharpen your skill set in whatever your particular um, area is in life, or you've not been afforded the opportunity to sharpen, sharpen your skill set. And so this is what you do. This is who you are. But you know that you're not at your best because your skills have not been sharpened yet. Right? And whenever we've not um, had our skills sharpened, we always show up with a sense of timidity, um, apprehension. Uh, it's almost, you know, impossible to escape thoughts of doubt. But when we, when we get those skills sharpened and we, we know what we're doing, come on, somebody. You know, it's kind of like David and Goliath. You know, David says to Saul, I can't use your armor to go and fight Goliath, but I know how to use my slingshot. He says, your stuff is not proven. Mine is proven. Whenever your skills are sharp, you can show up with, a sense of what? Confidence. Every woman should really devote herself um, to education, to self-development, because the world is always striving to break the woman's um, confidence. Because if the world can break your confidence, if the world can break the confidence of a queen, the world then can usurp her power. And the world, this toxic culture, thrives on the broken consciousness of women. And so every woman should commit herself to education, to self-development, to empowerment. You want to make certain that when you show up in the world, you know what you're doing. Because you're not entering a world that is going to at all aid you in terms of believing in yourself. So you have to know that when you show up in, you know, a world, a boardroom, or just a world in general that is saying to you, you should accept, you should accept second or third position just because you're a woman, you have to know that you know what you're doing. And the only way to know that you know what you're doing is to what? Have your skill set, skill set sharpened. Uh, letter C. You know, there's probably a deficiency not only in um, your original programming, uh, not only in your skill set, but clearly in your personal estimation. This is where uh, women quite often struggle, women and men, people, quite often struggle with imposter syndrome. You've done all of the work you've prepared yourself, you've educated yourself, you've, you've, um, you know, you've paid the price, you've gone around the block four or five times, and now you have the opportunity, but you show up with a, a poor, a lack of confidence because your personal estimation of yourself is lacking. You, you have not reconciled your abilities and your preparation with your identity. So though you're prepared, though you're prepared to be, uh, to sit in this seat and to fulfill this role, in your mind you have not, you don't identify yourself as such. So you feel like an imposter. And so now where you should be stepping into your strength, now you're you're, you know, you're, you're cowering and you're, um, you're yielding to fear and to doubt because your personal estimation is so poor. Uh, letter D, letter D, wherever there's a lack of confidence, there's a deficiency in your programming, your skill set, your personal estimation, your circle. 
Sometimes we're just surrounded by faith killers. Sometimes we're surrounded by people um, who will talk us down off of our greatness. Many times we're surrounded by people who will talk us out of doing certain things because they're afraid to do it and they don't want us to accomplish it because if we accomplish it, we've then gone to a level that they are afraid to go to and they, they would rather us, even though we're eagles, they'd rather us stay at a level at an altitude where they can fly. And so they'll talk you out of the mountain peak and they'll talk you into the treetops because they can go that high. And so a lot of times you lack confidence because of your circle. You're not surrounded by people who are encouraging you, who are cheering you on, people who are motivating you. You're surrounded by people who are shrinking you, people who are miniaturizing you. And I know I'm talking to a lot of you. This is where the toxic sisterhood, in my opinion, is as bad on the development of womanhood as toxic men. When you have sisters who intentionally talk you out of your greatness and you call these people your BFFs and your BFFs never have anything encouraging. They ne they're never celebrating your rise. They're always talking you down and talking you out of your greatness. So those are just a few things that I, I listed. Now let's get into the heart of this lesson. How does a woman build her confidence in a world that is committed to shrinking it, um, draining it? How, how do, you, how do you, you maintain a confidence? Now, let me also say this. A woman that is really confident, she doesn't have to say it. Because queen conscious women have presence without saying a word. You know, now don't get me wrong. There are women that are leaders and entrepreneurs and motivators, and they have to show up in public spaces and they have to say, well, you know, I'm a boss chicken, I'm this and I'm that, because they have a greater agenda. But in general, day to day life, if a woman really is confident, she doesn't have to say it. Confidence has an undeniable energy. Confidence is really the thing. This is, this is just a message to even brothers. Confidence is really the thing that's most attractive to women in men. It's not so much how good he looks or not even necessarily how much money he makes because I see brothers that are broke and don't even want a job that, you know, have some of the, you know, most attractive upwardly mobile women. It's the confidence. I see brothers with money and are very good looking who can't buy a woman. Well, hopefully nobody's trying to buy a woman anyway, but you get my point. And it's because what? They lack confidence. Confidence has an energy. And when a woman shows up with a certain confidence, that's like, that's queen energy. You know, that's wife energy. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so... Number one, number one, how does a woman, how does a woman maintain, build her confidence in a world that's constantly trying to drain it? Number one, she has to daily insulate her soul. I really meant to have something to illustrate this for you. But I don't have it, so I won't be able to do it visually. But hopefully my words can paint a picture for you. Insulation is, is it is pre-establishing boundaries between you and certain other influences. When a house is well insulated, there's material that they use in the walls and in the uh, attic of the home to keep out the elements. You know, if it's very cold, insulation will lock the heat in. If it's very hot, it'll lock the heat out and keep the cool in. It's, it's a boundary between one place 
one entity versus another. And any woman that walks in confidence and maintains her confidence lives with an insulated soul. Now what's the soul? The mind, the will, the emotions especially. Any woman that has a, an unshakable confidence insulates her emotions, insulates her mind from all of the influences, the negative and triggering influences of the world. And I mean, quite honestly, these principles apply to men as well. If you're going to walk in confidence, your soul is going to have to be insulated because the world is constantly sending messages. You're not good enough. You're a failure. You're a loser. Oh, it's not going to work this time. You have to, you have to block out all of these voices. This is what the Bible means by, or at least this is a part of what the Bible means uh, in Proverbs 4 and 23, where it says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Insulate, keep, protect, shield, keep safely your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. Whatever you allow to get into your heart, into your inner workings, your inner being, your thoughts will manifest issues in your life. Your, your life is the product of your internal condition. And so we have to what? Insulate. We must insulate the soul. The woman that, that sits in her confidence has insulated her soul. Now, how do we insulate the soul? from the toxic influences of the world. How does the woman do this? Meditation. Meditation. God told Joshua to what? Meditate on the word day and night that he might, that he might observe to do it and then he would make his own way prosperous and then he would have good success. Meditation is choosing your thoughts. That's basically what biblical meditation is. It is it is choosing your thoughts. And watch this. The thoughts you choose are the thoughts God has established for you. And so you find out what God says about you. You forget about what R.C. said about you or some other you know, person out here. You find out what God said about you and you keep that in front of you day and night. You keep it in your eyes. You keep it in your ears. You just you put it on your doorpost so you see it every day you go out, every time you come back in, you hang it on your mirror so that your mind is what inundated with God's thoughts concerning you. You think about it, you speak it, you say it, you mumble it, you meditate. That's how you insulate the mind. When when the negative influences of the world establish a thought in your mind that is negative, you pull it down through, you know, your words, through quoting what, what God says about you, what you believe about yourself. You find your, your, your favorite Bible teachers and your motivational speakers, you find quotes that they have and, and, and you commit those things to memory, put them, at least commit them to vision, put them in your space where you can see it and you can meditate. How do you, how does the woman insulate her soul? Meditation, letter B, reflection. Reflect on truth. Now you have thoughts that will, you know, try to rob you of your confidence. Thoughts that might say, you're not this or you're not that. But you know what? When you really stop and you get out of all of the hysteria of that emotion that that lie produced, and you really sit for a minute and you reflect and you look back over your life, you have more than enough evidence to disprove the lie that is trying to rob you of your confidence. That's, that, that's, uh, that is uh, a benefit of, of meditation. In the process of meditation, you, get, you also get a chance to reflect and you get a chance to look back over your life and you get a chance to see, okay, I'm having this thought about me as a woman, but it's a lie. 
because I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, and that. it's a lie. This thing I'm I'm about to, you know, jump off the cliff over is a complete and total lie. As I reflect, I I I I can see clearly now. So you 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 insulate the soul through meditation, through reflection, and then through rejection. You meditate, you reflect. I kind of gave you a hint of rejection. Once you reflect and you see, you can look over your life and you can see all of the wonderful things you accomplish. You go and look in the mirror, you realize that you are an extremely beautiful woman in and out. Now you got to reject those lies. Bible, the Apostle Paul, I think it was, called it pulling down strongholds. You got to reject those lies. You got to pull those things down and you got to spew that stuff out of your spirit like you're spitting stuff out of your mouth. You have to reject unfounded lies. And then you have to project yourself. In other words, doesn't matter what emotion you may be feeling, what thoughts you may be having, step into step into the best version of you. Come on now. Step into the best version of you. Project yourself. You ain't got to feel it. Project yourself. You got to project yourself in the direction you push your life in. You command your life to develop corresponding feelings. See, you're waiting to feel it before you do it. Babe, you got to do it before you feel it. Because doing it before you feel it is also a part of your process of renewing your mind. I hope this is helping somebody. So how does a woman, how does a woman build and maintain her confidence? What do we say? Number one, she's going to have to insulate her soul. Here's the illustration that I was going to use. I was going to write on a piece of paper, you are loved. That's what I was going to do. I was going to write on a piece of paper, you are loved. I was going to take that piece of paper, and I may use this illustration at some other point, illustrating how a woman has to embrace a negative, toxic world on a daily basis. Doesn't matter what the truth is, you are loved. The paper symbolizing the truth that is written in your spirit, on your heart, from the creator, you are loved. I was going to take that same paper and immerse it into water, the water symbolizing a toxic world. And we were going to see how, at best, that image of you are loved would have been marred, you know, if not completely distorted, that you wouldn't be able to make it out. Then I was going to take another piece of paper and I was going to write, you are loved. I was going to slide that paper into a Ziploc bag, symbolic of insulation, boundaries. And I was going to immerse the Ziploc bag with the you are loved on the inside of it into the water. And we were going to see how an insulated paper would not be impacted by a negative environment. When you take the time to insulate, establish boundaries around your soul, you are putting your soul, your emotional well-being into a Ziploc bag. You are, you are putting boundaries between your heart, your soul, and your spirit and this negative, toxic world that would seek to erase God's declaration of value spoken over your life. Now, number two uh, on, my, on my list relative to how a woman uh, builds her confidence and maintains her confidence in a world that is seeking to drain it. Number two, 
she's going to have to qualify the voices that she takes seriously. Million different voices out here, sweetheart. But you're going to have to qualify the voices that you take seriously. You cannot listen to every voice, nor can you take um, the voice of a clown and give it the strength of the voice of a king. You're going to have to qualify the voices that you take seriously, the voices that should, uh, number one, dominate your consciousness, number one, should be the voice of God, the opinion of the creator. That should be your primary voice. Number two, spinning out of his voice, it should be your own voice. You should be the greatest prophet of your own future. You should take the, the, the voice of God and you should parrot the voice of God internally to your own spirit and soul. And then number three should be chosen others. You can't just be a woman that's out here listening to everything on the social media, every voice that's uh, talking to women on the television or the radio. If, if you're going to be a woman that maintains her confidence, you're going to have to be a woman that qualifies the voices that speak into her life. You can't listen to everything and everybody. I, I watch women. Um, I have watched women, and I watch women even today, that just, it's almost like you get addicted to people that uh, have nothing but negative things to say to you, especially men that demean you and tear you down. It's like you keep showing up for that kind of treatment. You keep showing up to listen to that kind of rhetoric, and then you listen to it so long, it's, it's like you begin to parrot it yourself. It's like the voice, the voices of toxic men, it's like that those voices take over your vocal cords and now you're out here saying the same stuff that toxic men are saying. It's because the people you listen to are resetting your soul up or down. The voices you listen to are, are resetting you internally, reestablishing your internal settings up or down. If you're a Bible reader and you remember what happened with Elijah after he defeated the false prophets of Baal, Jezebel's prophets, she sent message to, to, to Elijah that I'm going to kill you tomorrow. And the Bible says when he heard what the messengers of Jezebel said, he started running for his life. He, he became suicidal and he panicked. It's because the voices we listen to can build our confidence or destroy it. That's why I pay attention to, before I take any, any particular person's voice seriously, I listen to the first few seconds or minute or so of what they're saying, and I, I check with my spirit. If I don't feel good, if I feel triggered by it, if I feel like this is not going to bring me to a good place, I cut them off. I shut that down because I am the police of my own heart. I have to police my ear gate. What I allow to come into my ears is going to directly impact my confidence, my ability to believe in me, my, my ability to believe in God. And so how much more important is it for a woman to qualify the voices that speak into your life? If you look in Proverbs 27 and 6, listen to what it says. Faithful are the wounds of a friend who corrects out of love and concern. Hmm. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful because they serve his hidden agenda. You have to qualify the voices that you allow to speak into your life as a woman. Because a lot of these voices are not designed for your empowerment. Come on now. 
the Bible says many false prophets have gone out into the world. You know, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You have to qualify the voices that you allow to speak into your life. Even as Christian women, you have to you have to choose your you have to choose your churches carefully. You have to choose your pastors carefully. Why sit in a church or under someone that's going to diminish your capacity to believe God for the best version of you? And it's happening all day in religion, in culture, in uh, entertainment, in education, in politics. It's happening all day in the lives of women where, where you're submitting yourselves to the voices of men that are simply trying to shrink you. Wow. All right. Lest I be too long, let's see. Number three, how does a woman... Uh, how does a woman, how does a woman build her confidence and maintain it? She must insulate her soul. And she, number two, she must qualify the voices that she takes seriously. In other words, there's some voices you just got to laugh at. You got to know that's a fool. You have to know that this is, um, what you call it, um, a jester. Come on now. You got to know that this is a jester. This is not a king. Because even in the even in the court of, of a king, uh, there's the king, but then he always has a jester, a clown that everyone laughs at. You can't take the words of a jester seriously. You, you, you're going to let somebody tell you about uh, what you can't have, you can't have no relationship because of your age or because of your size, and they don't even have, they don't have a woman. We don't see no relationship they got. And you're going to take that seriously? You're going to take relationship advice from somebody that ain't got no, no relationship? They ain't married? Come on, man. Get on out of here with that. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Come on. You got to qualify the voices that you take seriously. You don't, you don't jump all on the social media responding to everybody that disagrees with you. you, you you're above that. Queens don't respond to, you know, uh, critics. Queens don't care nothing about critics. Critics are just um, undercover fans. Anybody that take the time to type out you ain't this and you ain't that in your, in your feed, that's an undercover fan. People that I don't care about, I ain't taking out no time to be typing. Now, you know how much energy it takes to type and press that button? <clears throat> I ain't got time to do that. No, 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 no. Number three, women that um, maintain, build and maintain their confidence, they, they learn to own their energy, kind of leading out of what I just said. You don't let folk come in and... Um, hitchhike on your energy. You don't let folk hitchhike on your energy. You know, I can tell folks sometimes want to get a rise out of me, want me to respond. You know, because if I respond, a whole lot of folk are going to chime in. But I'm not giving you that. No, 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 no. You have to earn it the, the hard way, homie. I'm not giving you that. You can say what you want. You can say what you want. I'm not responding to you. I own my energy. You ain't going to pull me up. You ain't going to pull me down. I own my energy. I'm the only one who control my thermostat. Come on now. I'm the only one who control my thermostat. I own my energy. N never, never let environments establish, <clears throat> excuse me, your energy as a woman. Doesn't matter that you got to go to, you know, you know, a, uh, uh, a corporate environment where they don't believe in you. Well, what you thought? You, you, what you thought you was going to? You thought you was going to, you know, a cookout? What you thought you was going to? A reception, a welcoming party? 
No, babe, when you when you're a woman and you breaking through glass ceilings and you sitting up in rooms where, you know, formerly it used to be nothing but men, and now you sitting up in here performing and doing your thing and excelling, um, you're not gonna you're not gonna be sitting around tripping about how people don't like it. Don't okay, care nothing about them liking it. <clears throat> they gotta deal with it. You gotta own your energy. When you go into your job, you're not that's not your family. You know, you, you don't care how these people feel, you know, what, what they feel about you personally. That's not even your business, what these people think about you personally. You're there to perform and to excel on your energy because your happiness is your responsibility. It ain't those folks' job to, to make you happy. They can't make you happy. They can't keep you happy. It's your job to own your own energy, to show up happy and to leave happy. Somebody don't like it and they, you know, just tripping and they, they, they trying to create issues. Just look at them. Just look at them. And when they're done saying whatever they want to say, just ask them, are you all right today? And then proceed to excel. Because you got to, if you're going to maintain your confidence, you got to own your energy. That's a part of the insulation process. When you're well insulated, when your soul is insulated, you own your energy. See, that's that's one of the things I say to women, especially about knowing when it's safe or time for you to go into a relationship. You should never go into a relationship until you know that if this does not work, I still can own my energy and I can move on whole and healthy. If you feel like if I try to do this relationship and it doesn't work, it's going to take me four or five years to recover from it. Bae, stay home. Don't don't do no relationship. When you get to a point where you've matured enough that you can own your energy, that if a relationship doesn't work out, you can take your little while and just, you know, cry or whatever, but you ain't, you're not going to be blown away by it because you know that you have control of your own energy and no man is going to hijack your energy, hitchhike a ride on your energy. Come on, somebody. Women that have... Women that have and maintain confidence own their own energy. Proverbs 25, 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down and without walls. In other words, anybody can run up into your world all nil willy-nilly because you ain't got no walls. You ain't got no boundaries. You got He that hath no rule over his own spirit is controlled by the world. Right? All right. <clears throat> Number four. If you're gonna if you're going to um, develop and maintain confidence as a woman, you're going to have to learn how to dominate your doubts. Because you're gonna always have um, you know, we, we, we're gonna always have some doubts back then in the back of our minds. There was a man that met Jesus one day, and Jesus said, I'm going to do what you need. He said, well, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. That's a part of the human um, condition, that in one part of us we can believe completely, in another part of us we can have questions. But those of us that stay situated and centered in our confidence are those of us who, who have learned to dominate our doubts. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23, it says this, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, when he says, shall not doubt in his heart, he's not talking about a, a passing, fleeting question of, of some kind. He's talking about one that refuses to doubt in his at his core, has not accepted doubt as his internal setting. He says, this person will have whatsoever they say. Now, how do we dominate doubts. Letter A, 
you're going to have to keep your language up. Keep your language up. You know, the last thing you want to do as a woman is to, to be around here practicing negative, debilitating, low vibrational language. You got to keep your language high. You know, you got you got to keep words in your mouth like I'm beautiful I am capable I am winning you know you you, you just got to keep your language up letter B you got to always be prepared stay prepared don't go if you're not prepared stay prepared when you're prepared you know that nobody can take your preparation from you letter C drown out fear with gratitude when you start getting afraid of opportunities you got to shift your thinking from, I'm afraid of this opportunity I have on the job, and I'm fearful, and I'm, I'm doubting. You, you got to shift that to, I'm so grateful I have an opportunity to go to the next level. I'm so grateful that I have an opportunity to open the door for the next woman. I'm so grateful that I have an opportunity to prove to the world who God created me to be. And notice how that energy shifts. You go from, I'm scared. I wonder if it, what if I don't make it? What if I can't perform and all of this kind of stuff? To, I'm so great. Oh, my God. Uh, letter, da, 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 keep your language up, stay prepared, drown out fear with gratitude. Letter D, reframe every negative thought. Reframe every negative thought. Find a way to twist every negative into positive. You know how your mind takes every positive and twists and, and somehow finds a way to twist it into a negative? I need you to reframe the negative and twist it into a positive some kind of way. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, you rather than saying or concluding, they look, they looked me dead in my eye and looked over me. Twist that into, oh, they didn't recognize me. They'll catch me next time. Learn how. To reframe every negative. Letter E, keep going no matter your feelings. Keep going no matter what you're feeling. This is how you dominate doubts. If you keep going, your life is going to disprove the doubt. <clears throat> if you keep going, your life is going to disprove the doubt. You don't have to feel like a winner to win. Whew, I almost screamed. Like I was in church right there. You don't have to feel like a winner to win. Sometimes you can be apprehensive. You can be afraid even, but just do it anyway. Courageous people are not, uh, uh, you know, they're not people who are, are oblivious to fear and apprehensions. They're people that just refuse to allow those fears to, uh, you know, dominate their behavior. They do it afraid. And when they do it afraid, they get outcomes that make them say, now, what was I afraid of in the beginning? And then they what? They don't only go to the next level, they grow to the next level. And then watch this, and I, I got to get out of here because my time is gone. Number five, and finally, number five and finally, when we talk about how does a woman build her confidence, number five and finally, always show up at your best. Don't, don't, don't leave out the house. Don't leave out the house. Show up at your best. Show up, show up, show up, show up at your best. Yeah, yeah. Comb your hair to go to Walmart. Yeah, you know. Put a, put a little, you ain't got to do a whole lot, but put a little pot on your face before you go to Walmart. You know, if you if you know you ain't got your, uh, you need a pedicure right now, don't, don't wear them open toe shoes to Walmart. Put you some. Put your feet in something until you get to the people to take care of that. And make sure you go take care of that. Yeah, show up at your, show up at your best, always. Don't, don't show up to your job. Don't show up to your job, you know, half cocked, half prepared. No, be ready, man. If you got to stay up all night, always be ready. If you show up at your best, see, the way you feel about the way you show up is going to dictate how you feel people receive you. So if you show up at your best and you perform at your best, your, your subconscious mind is going to say, okay, they see you functioning at your best. So you're going to feel like they receive you at your best. Now watch this. If you show up half cocked, they may think you're great, but because you know you're not at your best, now you feel like they don't, they're not 
receiving you. They're not seeing you at your best because the way you see yourself is going to always be the way you think the world is looking back at you. So if you want to build your confidence, show up as your best because then you're going to see yourself as your best, at your best and you're going to view the world as seeing you at your best. Proverbs 31, 29 says, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excels them all. You got to show up at, at your best physically. Don't worry about no standards of the world. The world trying to tell you, well, you got to be this size. You got to. No, 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 babe. You, you got to be your best physically, whatever that means for you. Whatever weight that is for you, the weight you feel comfortable at, the weight you're healthy at, the weight you can function, the weight you feel good at. You know, if you're not feeling good about your weight, you need to gain or lose. Let that be an internal judgment, but be at your best physically. Be at your best emotionally. Do the work you got to do to get your emotions centered and under control and then be at your best spiritually. Make certain that you you you, you have your, your, your walk with God intact. And so I think if you do these things, I think you can show up as a woman that can build confidence and sustain confidence. Hope you got something out of this today. Now, let me pray for you, if I may. Father, I thank you for every person that's watching this. And now my prayer, dear God, is that you will take these words and cement these words to their hearts. And I uproot all insecurities and fears. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, listen, my time is far spent. I got to hurry up and get out of here. Make certain that you go to the website, rcblakes.com, sign up for my mailing list, check out all of my online programs. Watch this. I just dropped Mordecai Mission as an online program. You know, the normal Mordecai Mission program is a three month uh, Zoom program with Lisa and I and a whole team. And uh, we go every, every weekend when I have time to do it. My schedule is getting busier and busier and I'm not certain that I'm going to have time to do it. So I've not scheduled another Mordecai mission. So I took all of the, the 12, almost 13 hours of teachings on video, put them up on, into a program. All of the, the notes and the, the, the worksheets that everything that the women get in the Mordecai mission in person or on by Zoom, you can get by way of the online program for less than half of the cost. So if you've been wanting to take Mordecai mission, I encourage you to go and check out Mordecai mission at rcblakes.com. I think it'll be a I think it'll be a blessing to you. Now listen, uh, don't forget to go by uh, Amazon, pick up all of my books. You know, thank you for supporting us in that way. What am I missing? What am I missing? Uh, thanks to all of you who have sown into our lives. Lisa and I love you so much. And uh, if you need counseling, that's the part I was missing. Check out the link in the description. We have a wonderful uh, relationship with BetterHelp Counseling. And if you use the link and if you choose to use BetterHelp Counseling, it will afford you 10% off the cost of counseling. And they will, um, in turn, make a deposit into R.C. Blake's Ministries because I recommended them to you. Now, listen, I have, I have thoroughly enjoyed this time with you. I want you to have an amazing evening. Know that you're on top. You're going high. Your God is more in store for you. So we will see you at the top, right? But before we see you at the top, I need you to use your finger and hit the like button. Now, help me out. I love y'all. Until next time, I'm R.C. Blakes. God bless. We here at R.C. Blakes Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website 
at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blakes Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.